The White House now, but Wilbur Chapman, thank you so much. And let's listen in to Pete Buttigieg. Yesterday, America awoke to shocking images of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing after it was struck by a Neo Panamax container vessel. By the time most Americans saw those images, first responders and rescuers had already been at work for hours to save lives. That quick work unquestionably made an enormous difference, and they have our gratitude. In fact, uh, if not for several factors, including those responders' efforts, the May Day call, the maintenance closure that was already underway, and the time of day of this impact, the loss of life might have been in the dozens. But tragically, six people did lose their lives, and a seventh was badly injured. These were workers who went out to work on a night shift, repairing the road surface while most of us slept. Work is undergoing to recover their remains, and our thoughts and prayers are with their loved ones whose lives are never going to be the same. Even as those families come to terms with this grief, and even as those recovery operations continue, work is underway to investigate what happened and to restore the key transportation resources that were impacted. When it comes to the investigative work uh, led by the NTSB and supported by the Coast Guard, I will respect their independence and not comment on that work. But I do appreciate being able to engage with NTSB, Coast Guard, and other personnel yesterday at the site. I also spent time with Governor Moore, and I want to express my appreciation for his leadership. The governors responded to this unthinkable event with focus and compassion, and we're going to be working closely with him and with his state's DOT to support Maryland in their work to rebuild the bridge and reopen the port. I also want to thank Mayor Scott, County Executive Olszewski for their work and their team's work ensuring all resources are brought to bear in that response. While the investigation and the response continue, President Biden has made clear that this whole administration will be providing support in every respect for the recovery and the rebuilding process. From a Department of Transportation perspective, that really comes down to four major focus areas. Reopen the port, deal with the supply chain implications until the port does reopen, rebuild the bridge, and deal with the surface transportation implications until the bridge is rebuilt. Each of those is a distinct line of effort, and we're already taking steps toward each goal. With regard to the port, again, the Coast Guard, in coordination with the Army Corps of Engineers, will lead on the channel cleanup and the reopening so that that port can get back to full operation. We are concerned about the local economic impact, with some 8,000 jobs directly associated with port activities. And we are concerned about implications that will ripple out beyond the immediate region because of the roles, uh, the, excuse me, because of the port's role in our supply chains. This is an important port for both imports and exports, and it's America's largest vehicle handling port, which is important not only for car imports and exports, but also for farm equipment. No matter how quickly the channel can be reopened, we know that it can't happen overnight, and so we're going to have to manage the impacts in the meantime. We're working to mitigate some of those impacts, including using tools that didn't exist just a few years ago. Uh, following the disruptions to supply chains from the COVID pandemic, President Biden's infrastructure package included the establishment of a new freight office within our department to help coordinate goods movement in ways that were not possible before. <laughs> to be clear, ocean shipping is not centrally controlled the way you might expect with, for example, air traffic control. So having these tools allows us to create coordination that just didn't exist before. It's helped us to smooth out supply chains after COVID. It's helped us to manage the Red Sea crisis, and we're using it now to help the hundreds of different private supply chain actors get better coordinated to keep goods moving. Tomorrow, I will be convening shippers and other supply chain partners to understand their needs and to promote a coordinated approach as they adapt to the temporary disruptions uh, while we plan mitigations. Uh, that said, the Port of Baltimore is an important port, so for our supply chains and for all the workers who depend on it for their income, we're going to help to get it open as soon as safely possible. Now, for the bridge, uh, we are going to be working with NTSB as they lead their independent investigation. It's too early to speculate, of course, what NTSB will find, but if they discover or determine anything that should be considered in the regulation, inspection, design, or funding of bridges in the future, we will be ready to apply those findings. What we do know is a bridge like this one, completed in the 1970s, was simply not made to withstand a direct impact on a critical support pier 
from a vessel that weighs about 200 million pounds, orders of magnitude bigger than cargo ships that were in service in that region at the time that the bridge was first built. We also know that this is yet another demonstration of the importance of our roads and bridges, which is one of many reasons why the Biden-Harris administration worked so hard to get the infrastructure package passed and why roads and bridges are the single biggest category in that package. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.